Hey Grace Posse, welcome back to the Daily Devotion. I hope you guys are doing well. Today we're going to talk about Lance's Rise and Fall. We're going to focus on today on 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 7, which says the Lord makes, makes poor and makes rich. He brings low and he exalts. In 1996, Lance Armstrong was as feeble as they come. An aggressive form of testicular cancer had metastasized into his lymph nodes, lungs, and brain. The life of the world's top-rated cyclist was in danger. He was just 25. After two surgeries and four rounds of chemotherapy, Armstrong was cancer-free. His experience caused him to appreciate his life and in, com in a completely new and better way. He formed the Lance Armstrong Foundation to raise money for testicular cancer research. And he began to train again for cycling. Ten years later, Armstrong w was on top of the world. His autobiography, It's Not About the Bike, My Journey Back to, to Life, had been an inspiring bestseller. He had won the Tour de France cycling most prestigious event seven times in a row by selling Life Strong at branded wristbands. The Lance Armstrong Foundation was raising over 30 million dollars a year for cancer research. His name had become synonymous with overcoming adversity and success not just in sports, but also in life. And then it all came crashing down. A year after Armstrong retired from cycling, the US, uh, United States Anti-Doping Agency formally charged him with doping and trafficking performance enhancing drugs. He was stripped of his seven Tour de France wins and lost all his corporate sponsorships. His public reputation was ruined. He stepped down from the board of his foundation which changed his name to the Live Strong Foundation. Armstrong's biggest regret is not the doping but the fact that while but the fact that while other cyclists doped none of them attacked another human being. None of them sued another human being. And I did all these things. In the end, it was about the bike and the fame and the glory that came with the success on the bike. When the mighty forget their dependence upon God, their bows are broken. When the feeble depend upon God, they get all the, the strength that they need from the, from the source of unending strength. So let's, let's look at this passage in context. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 10 and 11, and then second, or 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. Hannah was deeply distressed and praying to the Lord, and she wept bitterly. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look upon the affliction of your servant and remember me and not forget your servant, but would give to your servant a son, I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor shall touch his head. And Hannah prayed and said, My heart exalts the Lord, my horn exalted in the Lord, my mouth derides my enemies because I rejoice in your salvation. There is none holy like the Lord, and there is none besides you. There is no rock like God. Talk is more so very proudly. Let not arrogance come from your mouth. For the Lord your God of not is Lord your God is a God of knowledge and not him actions are weighed against him by him all actions are weighed 
and the bowels of the mighty are broken, but the feeble bind, bind on strength. Those who were full have hired themselves out for bread, and those who were hungry have ceased to hunger. The barren has borne seven, but she who has many children is forlorn. The Lord kills and brings to life. He brings down to Sheol and raises up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich, and He brings low and He exalts. So let's look at some questions that we can reflect on and draw some application from. Do you agree with Hannah that the bowels of the mighty are broken, but the feeble bind on strength? When have you witnessed that? Do you think that when he overcame cancer, Lance Armstrong really appreciated his life in a completely new and better way? If so, then what went wrong for him? If God can rate your appreciation and gratitude on a scale of 1 to 10, how do you think you would score? How would you rely on God for strength? In what situations are you willing to admit that you cannot win on your own. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, help us to remember that while some people appear to be strong on their own, true and lasting strength only comes from you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you guys, and I'll see you next time.